holiday season. Council started at 5.40 in a uh, closed session and we're now moving into the open session. I just got to get to the right page. Um, I note that Councillor Dodd is unable to attend tonight. Um, next to my list, I think, is an additional items. Any additional items? Councillor Lemon? I have an additional item about a private site. Okay, thank you. Any others? Councillor Thomas. Thanks, Your Worship. I have two items tonight, uh, one on the Festival of the Northern Lights and one on uh, committee vacancies of the city. Okay, thank you. Councillor Kepke. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, one item regarding Kiwanis tree sales, one item regarding the Active Lifestyle Senior Center, and some musical opportunities in December. Good, thank you. Anyone else? Staff, oh, staff, yep, go ahead. Brianna? Yes, I have uh, an additional bylaw to ratify a memorandum of understanding with QP443. Good, thank you. And I'll have a uh, few things that I've done in the last couple of weeks on the list. Next is a disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Seeing none. Um, number five is confirmation of minutes. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor O'Leary, that the minutes of the regular council meeting held on October 30th, 2017, as printed, be adopted. All in favor? That is carried. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor O'Leary, that the minutes of the special council meeting held on November 2nd, 2017, as printed, be adopted. And all in favor? That is carried. So we're down to number six. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor O'Leary, that City Council now go into Committee of the Whole to consider public meetings, deputations, public question period, matters arising from correspondence, reports, matters tabled, motions for which notice was previously given, and other business. Great, thank you. And all in favor? That is carried. So we're now in Committee of the Whole. Down to uh, number seven on the agenda. We have no public meetings. Number eight, we had a deputation planned to uh, welcome our new poet laureate, but uh, she's apparently uh, ill. There's lots of flu and things going around, I think. So we'll uh, put that off to the next meeting. Uh, public question period. Does anyone in the public have a question? Seeing nobody moving quickly enough. Uh, correspondence number 10, received for which direction of council is required. Councillor Gregg. Well, personally, I'm glad to see this correspondence. Um, I think it was last year we uh, had Mr. Cohn in the building and uh, um, he's a great uh, ambassador for our community. And uh, two years ago uh, in this building here, uh, met a gentleman from uh, just west of Terra who had won the Boston Marathon uh, in the uh, specialized uh, wheelchair division and uh, I think uh, the old symbol is is quite outdated well, I'll so maybe get you to back up and give some description so if anyone's watching a TV they know what you're talking about on uh, what's on the letter. sure yeah so it's uh, uh, correspondence from our MPP Bill Walker uh, in support of altering uh, the new um, wheelchair accessible signage into a more dynamic symbol. Uh, this has been something that Mr. Walker has uh, been sending out um, for the last couple months. So I think it's great to finally see this in front of us. And uh, if having it go to accessibility committee um, for their feedback is an appropriate spot to start, then I'd be happy to move that. So you're moving, sending this letter yeah. to accessibility for their for input. Yeah. Their input. Good. Thank you, Councillor Lemon. I think that's uh, appropriate for the motion to go there. That's what I was thinking of doing, but I, I really feel that it's. This is showing that people who are handicapped can do things, versus sort of sedentary, which the other is. And uh, when you look at things like the Invictus Warriors, and uh, they can do a lot. And uh, years ago, the saying was, 
don't ask me what I can't do, ask me what I can do. And this is very much can do. And I certainly think it's a great idea, and I look forward to the discussion at the uh, uh, committee level, uh, which I sit on, uh, because I think this is a good idea. Good. Thank you. Any other discussion? I'm going to call the question. All in favor? That is carried. Thanks, Scott. Uh, number 11A, we're down to reports. Mr. Ritchie. Thank you, Your Worship. I have a uh, report tonight on the Tom Thompson Art Gallery. Uh, the recommendation is that in consideration of staff report CM 17016, respecting the Tom Thompson Art Gallery, City Council accepts the report and directs that, one, the 2018 operating budget for the gallery be prepared by city staff with input from staff of the Tom Thompson Art Gallery. Two, for 2018, the Art Gallery operates as a city department reporting to City Council through the City Manager's Office, and three, any deficit from Art Gallery operations in 2017 be recouped from City funding of the Art Gallery over the next 10 years. A uh, little background, Your Worship. The Tom Thompson Art Gallery, Art Gallery Board appointed a transition committee and approached City Council with a request to investigate becoming a... Oops, thank you. Got my best technical person on it, Your Worship. Um, the Tom Thompson Art Gallery Board appointed a transition committee and approached City Council with a request to investigate becoming a separate legal entity to incorporate an art gallery in the City of Owen Sound. In response to this request, Council appointed an ad hoc gallery incorporation committee with three council members and two members appointed by the Tom Thompson Art Gallery Board. The ad hoc committee met numerous times to discuss and find agreements on a number of key issues. These included the City's art collection, governance of the new incorporated entity, ongoing city financial contribution, lease of the current art gallery building, property tax status of that building, termination and transfer of current city employees at the gallery, and ongoing benefit coverage for transferred employees. At the City Council meeting of August, 18, August 8, 2016, I presented staff report CM 16018, Art Gallery Incorporation Process to Council. In summary, I reported that we had reached satisfactory agreement on principles that would allow the Art Gallery Board to incorporate the proposed operating entity. The Board of the Tom Thompson Art Gallery has provided oversight to the Curator for 2016 and 17 budgets and operations of the Gallery. For 2016, the Tom Thompson Art Gallery reported a deficit up from operations of approximately $85,000. The Board assured Council and City staff that the 2017 budget would be achievable and they would put measures in place to more closely monitor monthly operating results to budget. Throughout the year, City staff consulted with Tom Thompson Art Gallery staff and no concerns were raised regarding actual results tracking to budget. The Chair of the Tom Thompson Art Gallery made a deputation at the October 20th, 2017 Council meeting and informed Council of an impending deficit from operations of the gallery in 2017. She noted that the board's plans for incorporation and expansion of the gallery are now on hold. Shortly before the chair made that deputation, city financial staff were informed by the Tom Thompson Art Gallery that they were now anticipating a significant operating deficit for 2017. Since receiving that information, city staff have spent many hours reviewing the financial records of the Tom Thompson Art Gallery and working with gallery staff to determine what the level of the deficit may be. Due to the complexity of several of the multi-year programs and the funding agreements that support those programs, city staff are not able at this time to inform council of the exact amount of the deficit. We can confirm it will be significant and will require a multi-year payback plan. City Council values the collection of the Tom Thompson Art Gallery as a treasure for the city, its residents and visitors. Council was appreciative of the Tom Thompson Art Gallery Board's vision and efforts to increase the profile of the gallery and to make it an even broader attraction. The Board feels that under the circumstances it is time to move away from that vision, and I agree. It is imperative that the operation of the Tom Thompson Art Gallery are aligned with the financial support that the city taxpayer can provide. This will occur if the operating budget is prepared under the direction of the city's finance department with input from the Tom Thompson Art Gallery staff. To ensure that the gallery operations conform to the work plan approved during budget review, it is recommended that the Tom Thompson Art Gallery operates as a city department reporting to city council through the city manager's office. 
It is further recommended that once the magnitude of the deficit for 2017 is established, <coughs> excuse me, that it be repaired to the city via a reduction in the city's budgetary support to operate the gallery over the next 10 years. Moving forward, Your Worship, working with staff from the Tom Thompson Art Gallery and the support of the many long-standing local supporters of the gallery, it can continue to be a valuable asset to the city. That's my report, Your Worship. Thank you. Councilor Thomas. I'd like to move the recommendation, Your Worship. Thank you. Any discussion? Peter? Councilor Lemon, sorry. I answer to both. Uh, the uh, new system, this will provide a system of checks and balances to make sure that it's operating at close to budget? Yes. Thank you. Nothing else? All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Number two is report from clerk's office. Go ahead. Yes, through your worship. Bill 68, Modernizing Municipal Legislation Act, received royal assent on May 31st. However, many, provision, many of the provisions affecting municipal councils come into force at a later date. The effective dates are outlined in the report. The focus of this report was to identify legislation changes that are noteworthy for City Council. Council must adopt policies with respect to council employee relations and pregnancy and parental leaves of council members. The definition of meeting has been updated and there have been additions to close meeting requirements. Council will be able to permit a member to participate electronically in a meeting that is open to the public but cannot be counted in determining quorum. In 2022, the term of council will begin on November 15th. Council may appoint one of its members to be an alternate to county council. If this is something council is interested in pursuing, a resolution will be required for a staff report. Council will be required to appoint an integrity commissioner. I have been working with Gray County and other Gray County municipalities on a joint integrity commissioner. A report will be pr presented to Council in the new year. Council must adopt a code of conduct. We already have one, but it will be reviewed by staff and the integrity commissioner. Council members will be required to file a written statement with the clerk when disclosing a pecuniary interest and the clerk must keep the register of the statements. Any of these changes will be addressed with the revised procedural bylaw coming forward to Council in December and policy changes will also come forward to Council for review. The recommendation outlined in the report is for Council to receive the report for information purposes. Thank you. Councillor Lemon? So okay, so that's uh, moving to receive the report for information purposes. Yes. Any discussion? Councillor Kepke? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, following the vote of that particular motion, I'd like to uh, bring forward a request on a report from the clerk regarding um, an alternate member to sit on the Gray County Council. Okay, we'll come back to you. So with regard to this report as it stands, any other discussion? Go ahead. Thank you. Where do we stand with our integrity, Commissioner? Go ahead, I'm Brianna. sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, um, so we've met with Gray County and we've yes. interviewed a uh, prospective firm and the county is sending a report and bylaw forward in December and many of the other local municipalities are going to be following suit in the new year. Okay, that's what I thought we were doing. Okay. okay, thank you. So all in favor? That is carried. Going back to Councillor Kapke. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I think uh, I'd like to see something regarding the alternate member regard to Gray County Council because of our weighted voting and losing some of that weighted voting should one of the members not be allowed or not be able to be there. And I'd like to see something uh, from the clerk on a, a, an approach to do that in the new term. Um. So I'm making a motion that the clerk prepare a report regarding the, an alternate to Gray County Council. There we go. Other discussion? Thank you. Discussion, questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried. Good. Thank you. Uh, number three is the easement agreement, which I understand. 
Thank you, Your Worship. This is a, an easement agreement with Martin and Melody Donald regarding um, their property on 28th Avenue East. And I would ask that Council defer their consideration of that report, 17165. While I understand our solicitor has made the changes requested through their solicitor, the Donalds have not yet signed that agreement. So it would come back to Council, uh, defer your consideration until the, uh, the agreement has been signed. So just a little premature. So do we need a motion to defer then, uh, Brianna? No. So it'll just come back at the appropriate time. Good. Thank you. Oh, question first. I just want to ask, is, is that not the exact same thing that this person did before? Going through the same procedure? Came to council? Uh, <clears throat> through you, Your Worship, we did have a um, an original agreement. Uh, previously, we did try to negotiate a revised agreement, but we didn't. Uh, we didn't uh, achieve a revised agreement, which is the the reason for the new easement agreement, which I think will allow the city and the Donalds to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. So number four is a report with regard to the Eight Street Reservoir lands. Your Worship, the city received an offer to purchase the former reservoir lands from 2243344 Ontario Inc. The city's land sale bylaw prescribes a certain process be followed in the sale of lands. The land was declared surplus. There were two public meetings and a bylaw was passed. Evaluation was, was received and the lands were listed for sale on April 29, 2016. The appraised value of the land was 200000 and was based on the land value without the reservoir in the property. At its closed meeting on April 24, 2017, Council considered an offer and directed the City Solicitor to sign back the offer with certain conditions, including an, an acknowledging an easement and encroachment agreements on the property, continued ability to market the property, and a development timeline with the City buyback option. A revised agreement of purchase and sale was executed by the City Solicitor as agent for Council and the sale closed on November 7th. The purchase price, as is, was 87000 with the buyer bearing the cost to remove the reservoir tank. A formal development application has yet to be submitted, but it is understood that the buyer intends to use the land for residential development. We need a resolution from Council to receive the report for information purposes. Thank you. Councillor Kepke? I will move that motion, Your Worship. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favour? That is carried. Thanks, Brianna. Um, number five, purchasing agent. Is that Kate? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, this is to award our RFP for external auditing services. Um, this is a five-year uh, term, and it is awarded to BDO Dunwoody, our only respondent. The total audit fees are in line with what we've been paying, so there is no anticipated increase in budget. And this will also include audit services for the DIA and the library, both of whom have confirmed that this is acceptable to them. Good. Thank you. Councillor Kepke? Just a question. Um, since the art gallery is coming back under the umbrella, will there be audit fees then added for the art gallery? The art gallery has always been included in our external audit, so they will continue to be. Because they weren't listed here separately, I didn't know. No. Come on, hit the button. <coughs> yep. I will move the recommendation that we consider the staff report and that BDO Canada be the, uh, our, our um, auditors. Thank you. Any discussion, questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried. I think we're down to number six, which is a uh, contract services administrative assistant from the contract services with regard to lease agreement at the airport. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. <coughs> uh, 884152 Ontario Limited is the owner of uh, Hangar B5, which is. Uh, 3,844 uh, 3, square feet uh, and has a, had a lease uh, for the last 20 years. Um, they have approached the city and given notice of intent to renew the agreement. 
the proposed lease uh, builds on the lease that was negotiated with the other three leaseholders earlier in the year and is escalated to the uh, to the next year or to 2018 uh, the proposed lease rate would be uh, 45.7 cents per square foot plus an annual adjustment uh, of the CPI uh, up to December 31 2036 uh, and the staff recommendation your worship is that uh, council pass a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute the agreement Thank you. Discussion, motions. Councillor Gregg? I'd move the recommendation. Further discussion? It's a quiet night. Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. Uh, number seven is Coulter. I think it's declared surplus land. Thank you, Worship. Um, we have a number of properties listed for sale in the industrial park and council recently sold a piece of property and you have received an offer uh, for lands described as part two plan 16R4173. This property, there's a key map and it's on the west side of 16th Avenue, north of 20th Street. Um, the city's land sale bylaw stipulates a certain process respecting sale of land and a notice of intention to declare surplus and dispose of these lands lands has not been given in accordance with the bylaw. So we would ask council to initiate that process by asking the clerk to give notice uh, to the public for an opportunity for them to have input into uh, the sale of that land. Um, that it would be done in the Sun Times as well as posted on our website. So the recommendation is that in consideration of this report that you would direct staff to provide notice and afford the public an opportunity to comment on the city's intention to declare surplus these lands, that you would direct staff to post it on the website and in the Sun Times, and that you would ask staff to bring forward a bylaw to declare the land surplus subject uh, pending the outcome of the public meeting and you would authorize the method of disposition to be by real estate listing Thank you councillor Thomas. I'd move that recommendation okay. further discussion Seeing none all in favor and that is carried. Thank you down to number eight Deputy Mayor Wright. Thank you very much. It just a, a very short report tonight uh, we did have a presentation from the Southwest Palette of Care and um, it just I'm not sure if, or if you're interested but the, the uh, report was that there's six percent fewer hospital deaths uh, up here and now and um, because Chapman House has eight beds funded by the ministry and they are also looking to open up uh, three other areas uh, Stratford uh, Hanover and Brockton so that was just a bit of an interest report it was interesting though the um, uh, we had a, a <coughs> corporate service budget, a preliminary look at it, and it looks pretty good. It looks at a 0.83% increase, uh, but that does not include the capital budget. So although we want to say that that's wonderful to be under 1%, the capital budget isn't included in that. Okay. Okay, that's it. Any questions for Deputy <laughs> Mayor Wright? Councillor Lemon, you've got a question on your face. Yeah, uh, in terms of lease services uh, the profits on the operation of the uh, uh, dispatch service that they have does that go to capital or where does that money go what money? on the police service budget I thought that's what you're looking at at the county yeah the service? okay you paramedic push. yeah oh. okay you push your button Arlene are you talking, oh. are you talking about Sorry. Are you talking about the court services? Yeah. Oh, okay. So the profit from there? Yes. Well, the profit, if there is profit from there, it would go to the county or to whatever area it's distributed to. And in, in case there's fines, fines collected up there that belong to the city of Owen Sound, they would send the city of Owen Sound a check. So that's uh, revenues from uh, provincial offenses is what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So we're down to the consent agendas, 11B. Through your, you, your worship, on the consent agenda this evening is minutes for receipt from the library board, police services board, Grace Sable Conservation Authority, and several sets of minutes from the Upper Lakes Committee. 
Advanced Planning of Care and Beyond at 1063 12th Street East received its business license and there's correspondence received which is presented for the information of council. A full listing is available at 11 B6. Good, thank you. Uh, you got that? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to stand up. Oh, okay. Moved by myself that City Council hereby receives item 11 B1 to 11 B6 on the consent agenda dated November 20th, 2017. All in favor, and that is carried. I'm going to go back to uh, the first one, Councillor Thomas, library. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, I would say the most notable uh, fact from the September 28th meeting was uh, we were able to welcome uh, finally a representative from the municipality of Meaford, uh, Frank Emptage, who is a member of the uh, Meaford Public Library Board, has uh, joined our board and will attend our meetings uh, from here on out. Um, other than that, it's business as usual. There were updates on the uh, library book sale, which I'm happy to report was the second most successful library book sale in the history of the book sale. So, uh, and of course, I'm going to take credit for that because uh, there's a stack of books in my office now that I don't know how I'm going to get through them. Uh, aside from that, uh, things are moving along at the library. We're on budget for this year, and everything's good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number two, Police Services Board, Brian. Thank you, Worship. Uh, Chairman Garth Pierce advised that we're still waiting for confirmation of our vacant provincial appointee to the board. Uh, we've had Bill Walker working on it, um, and we discussed that a little further. The update, uh, it only took them two and a half years to turn down the previous applicant uh, because it was sitting on a minister's desk. But we do have two new applicants. They have both been interviewed by telephone uh, so I'm assuming that that's, uh, that's nearing uh, finish. Uh, the OPP costing has been the most anticipated event. We now await the city appointed consultants to complete the review and analysis along with the possibility of public meetings being scheduled. I talked to the city manager today and we are still on track for a presentation on the 4th of December. Thank, Thank you. you. Seeing no questions, uh, next, Conservation Authority. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the October 11 meeting of the Grace Alba Conservation Authority um, minutes are before us, and in that set of minutes under the water management, the um, board received a presentation on invasive species from the stewardship technician, and this was all of to deal with all of the Grace Alba conservation properties. Um, further to that, a uh, presentation was made to community services, particularly on the properties in Owen Sound that had invasive species. Uh, draft one of the proposed 2018 budget is, is being undertaken. Um, there are modifications to current value assessments which may affect uh, some mun municipalities significantly in the uh, Conservation Authority budget. And just to mention that Chair Dick Hibma is making a presentation to MNRF, um, Natural Resources and Fisheries, voicing our concerns that with regards to the $71,779 from MNRF, stressing, stressing that these monies are well below the cost to deliver the mandatory programs required by the Conservation Authority. So hopefully he'll have a little success there. Forestry tenders were awarded for 169 acres of market forest area, and the sale of those were uh, saw logs and fire fuel wood um, for $133,000. So it's a very successful program with the Conservation Authority and um, continues to be. And that's uh, all of that report. So good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lemon, I assume, uh, Upper Lakes committee yes the maritime memorial of the upper lakes well i do apologize that uh, we're getting caught up in minutes at this point um, and uh, i am partially responsible for that or largely responsible for that i'll take uh, the blame uh, basically you already know what we've done with the manitoba Anybody who's been down at the harbor at night can see the, the model that's, uh, as she is. It's very, very spectacular and certainly adds to the harbor. We're working now with the uh, Legion on the uh, 
five flagpoles that uh, are be, uh, between the medical building and the harbor wall. There's five flagpoles there. Unfortunately, when they were originally installed, some of them weren't installed properly. And as a result, the flagpoles, rather than being straight vertical, which flagpoles were expected to be, there are four of the five are on an angle. Three of them will have to have new bases put in, and we're currently achieving funding for that from the, not from the city, but from other sources. And uh, the good news is we are now at $1,250 that we've received for the restoration and improvement of that area. Uh, these are funds that have been donated. Uh, one uh, grant is from the Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 6. The other is a uh, totally unsolicited grant from the Ladies Auxiliary at the Legion for 500. So that's where the 1250 comes from, and I think we have some other sources that we'll be able to tap into. So again, that improvement of those flagpoles will be at no cost to the taxpayers. Um, we are looking at the potential of solar lights on the flagpoles uh, to light the, the lights. Uh, traditionally, military poles, the flags are lowered at sunset and raised at sunrise. But if the flagpole is lit, it is permissive to leave the flags flying 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, any flags going there will be under the city's guidelines of the uh, flags that can be flown on public lands. And uh, that's about it at this point. Anyone have any questions? Please to answer them. No others. C Councilor Lemon, I noticed that there is uh, extra lights Figure out which uh, September 21st uh, meeting there is a reference to extra product that uh, is worth approximately four thousand uh, dollars. What was decided with that? Well, what we have done is we are retaining those lights for a future project, um, and we're working on things. Part of the uh, lights are going to be used at the Marine Rail Museum to enhance that property. Uh, the lights that were there, uh, decorative lighting is gone, well, basically it's all garbage at this point. And uh, we have uh, uh, 600 feet of uh, cable light uh, with a rather unique type of bulb that will be going up uh, uh, around the uh, Maritime Memorial, or pardon me, around the uh, community Waterfront Heritage Center, and we've been working with Pam Coulter on this. Good, thank you. Any others? Seeing none. Good, thanks for the report. Um, is there anything in the correspondence that anyone want to discuss? Go ahead, Councillor or Deputy, uh, Deputy thank Mayor you. Wright. <clears throat> there are three items I'd like to raise. Uh, the correspondence from AMO regarding the policing legislation. There's a couple of interesting things in that uh, legislation. Uh, one being the changes to the uh, to the board that and the municipalities seem to are seem to are going to be more responsible for the makeup of the police services board, and also budget disputes as in there. If we could um, maybe get some more information about that, if it if it's uh, available, no rush for it because it's not coming until 2018, but it could have significant. Uh, bearing on what we're talking about and specifically so you want to report on something yeah okay yeah and can so you the, the, I'll get you to just, move it just some information on on uh, if they're going to go ahead with it it's going to have some meaning to this unit to the council do we, do we need a motion or so I'll get you to word a motion of what it is that you're asking okay, for. then I would ask that uh, uh, put a motion forward that uh, we receive a report uh, um, indicating what changes the municipality we will have to make as a council with respect to the new policing legislation introduced at Queen's Park. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. The second one is um, <coughs> the uh, fire medic approach. 
I think that uh, AMO, AMO has, um, let me see here, that uh, government has asked the arbitrators not to force municip the municipalities into the fire medic approach. Now, if I think that we need to really hold their feet to the fire on that one. And I don't know whether that means that we should write a letter uh, in support of AMO down to the ministry or or whether we should just simply wait. I would like to have some information on that. Your Worship, uh, the Chief and I actually were looking at that and Council uh, actually has a resolution, I believe from March, saying that we did not uh, want that to be uh, ever adjudicated, I guess. So we can certainly send that letter. We already have that authority and we will do that. Okay. okay. And the next one is um, the correspondence regarding the weather networks. I think we've written a letter be in the past in supporting that the, uh, our local uh, Rogers maintains the weather network on the basic TV. Have we done that again? Or if not, I would put a recommendation that we do support that. To your worship, a letter has already been sent to support. Oh, good. That's great. Thank you very much. Good. Go ahead, Marion. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the um, AMO communication regarding the action plan for seniors and noting that the um, Active Lifestyle Centre has, along with other senior groups in the areas, a very strong um, age-friendly community group that's very active with this and, and uh, certainly going forward. It's right across Gray Bruce that their organization is and they're applying for funds. That's right. Good. Thanks. Um, we did pass. Yes, we did. So we're down to 11C, which is minutes of boards and committees for approval, starting with the Community Services Committee. Councillor McManaman, if you want to step in for Councillor Dodd. Thank you, Worship. Happy to uh, pinch hit for the Councillor. Um, very uh, efficiently run meeting, as you'll see by the timing. Uh, the first item on the agenda was a deputation from Rebecca Ferguson from the Gray Sobel Conservation Authority about invasive species. It was more of an information session for, for the committee. Um, Conservation Authority has received some grant funding to, I'd say, coordinate what's being done about invasive species uh, in, in their watershed, including uh, the City of Own Sound. Um, there are nine invasive plants identified in this area, two of which uh, direct, uh, directly affect the city, giant hogweed and phragmites. Um, the city has been dealing with them, as have other municipalities, on a sort of one-off uh, individual effort, uh, and uh, the Conservation Authority, I guess, is looking at considering uh, should there be a more coordinated approach right across the, the county. Um, as I said, we do deal with it. We have had some success with our Phragmites in the Kelso Beach area. We also have some areas that uh, we have not had great success. So uh, it's, a, it's a work in progress. And not to be forgotten is the Emerald Ash Borer as well, which uh, at this point has still not been identified on in the city, but uh, we're quite certain that it is coming. It's, it's all around us. That will have significant impact on our ash tree inventory and also significant uh, budget implications too uh, as that moves forward. Um, so anyway, that, as I said, that was just more for information. One other item, uh, we approved a facade and structural improvement grant, uh, grant uh, extension to attorney's smoke shop to complete their work. And as I understand, they uh, may have completed it already. So uh, that's before us. The last item, uh, we, I think, believe we have discussed this before. It's about our story maps on our website. A news release went out uh, a week or two ago. Um, basically, we have a new layer on our website that talks about our historic plaques. Um, all those yellow plaques you see around town, and there's, oh boy, how many are there? 30 odd some. Um, uh, you can now access them online, identified where they are, and get a copy of that uh, of that plaque. And uh, as you see on the screen right now, if you go on the city website, you can click on here. It identifies, uh, here we are. If uh, Mr. Hilliker could just scroll down a little bit, it, that's the section on the website. You can go down and connect 
all those different ones, but if you look at our uh, historic plaques specifically, that's what pops up. All the different locations in the city and all the historic <coughs> plaques that are there. So an interesting initiative, uh, hopefully that will, um, that our residents and visitors can look. You click on, there you are, Centennial Tower. It shows you where the Centennial, Centennial Tower is and uh, what the specific plaque is. So hopefully used by our residents and our visitors to uh, learn more about the scenic city and where you want to live. So that's with that, Your Worship, I will, uh, that's, I think I, sp I took longer with the minutes than the chair took with the meeting. Um, I'm sure he'll comment about that when he's back. Uh, I will move adoption of these minutes and happy to answer any questions. So any questions? So Councillor Lemon, I think that map is probably at onsound.ca and then you go to explore across the top and then hit maps and you hit the GIS maps and it goes in and there's all kinds of, uh, does it have the trees? Does the public get to see where all the trees are too or is that just internal at this point? But, but lots of other things that we'll keep adding as we uh, go ahead. I think that's what you meant, wasn't it? Exactly. Thank, thanks for answering my question. <laughs> Councillor Lemon. Just one comment. Uh, to me, uh, identifying the, the, the history this way is something that uh, means that people who are coming up here will start to get an idea of the wide range of things from the first uh, steel ship built in Canada uh, to uh, the <coughs> propeller capital of Canada to many other things. And I think this is a good beginning. And as we add more plaques, which I'm certain we're going to be, uh, we can uh, put them on the map. And uh, it really puts Owen Sound on the map in terms of how much heritage and history is here. Uh, it's very, very significant. Fenian raids, everything. Good, thank you. Well done. So approval of those minutes, all in favor? That's carried. Thanks, Jim. Uh, next is Corporate Services Committee. So thank you, Councillor Gregg. Thanks, Mayor Body. Uh, <clears throat> go over uh, a pretty quick meeting other than uh, one report that uh, we spent a little bit more time on. We had the open a meeting with a deputation from Liz Zetland and Catherine Forsyth uh, asking for healthier choices to be uh, placed into uh, the an RFP, which is being done in the very near future for uh, facilities or for the vending machines in city facilities. What the committee uh, felt most appropriate the, and staff are able to accommodate is uh, a mechanism in the scoring tool in the RFP to um, give them some the way or to be able to reward uh, to some degree that the healthier items that a company may be able to offer. Um, we had uh, a well-written letter uh, from a resident, from a young fella, uh, asking for a change to in bicycle, current cycling regulations, which uh, the committee's uh, received and uh, forwarded to operations for future consideration when 9th Street West Hill is uh, being uh, rehabilitated. Uh, that um, cycling lanes be included in the um, long-term uh, consideration there. Obviously, it's pretty steep right now and pretty narrow, so it's not something that could be accommodated uh, without significant change. So uh, we had uh, further information uh, like we've been getting regarding time management from the fire chief. And we did have a Q3 financial update for the operating and capital uh, reviewing for 2017 and I'll just fly through um, some of the key divisions the general revenues uh, for the city after the third quarter are in a deficit position of a uh, hundred and thirty five thousand dollars approximately most of that is attributable attributable to the tax write-offs of a hundred twenty thousand dollars 2017 is the first of the four-year assessment cycle and these write-offs are likely to trickle into 28 be before they balance out. That's uh, just a function of, of MPAC's assessment uh, being done last year. WSIB, we have monthly premiums uh, per $100 of wages. Uh, we pay a $3.05 premium. That's up from $2.88 the year before. We have been surcharged. Um, if you can be in a refund or a surcharge position, 
um, after afterwards um, reflecting whether or not your premiums are sufficient. We have been surcharged 251,000 for police and 266,000 from fire with a general uh, surcharge in a deficit position or a negative position actually of $25,000. The aggregate surcharge the city can take will be approximately $211,000, which is unbudgeted. However, last year we did place $50,000 into a WSIB reserve um, in case this scenario uh, was to come forward. Uh, governance is within budget. City manager department anticipated at a $140,000 under budget, which is uh, primarily driven by wage gapping. Corporate services also anticipated to be under budget by approximately $50,000. Engineering, we are trending to be approximately $200,000 over budget by year end. Uh, that's uh, considering normal ebbs and flows of, of winter uh, coming on. Uh, also had fairly significant costs from a Vactor lease, which was over and above the use of our own Vactor. Uh, and that was due to stormwater and drainage demands during a wet spring and wet summer. I would suspect they could be corrected on that, but that's my guess. Uh, this is a, um, there is a working surplus uh, currently in recycling to provide some partial offset to that uh, department. Facilities, approximately $30,000 under budget to this point in the year. And I should mention this is end of September. Community services, special events are $50,000 over, driven by Canada 15160 overruns. We're all familiar with that. Building and planning permits uh, and fees are well over budget, though, which is a positive and a sign of growth in the community, which is what we've all been striving for and what we need. So uh, that is helping offset that uh, over budget and community services. Fire is estimated to be in line. Tom Thompson Art Gallery, I don't need to speak of, we already have. And I can wrap that despite the WSIB surcharge, which was uh, somewhat unforeseen and unanticipated, that actual will be still um, in line with budget at year end at this point is, is where we think we're going there. So obviously just a lot of information that the committee received. And um, beyond that, we did have uh, in the past year, an allocated space in the municipal lot that a business had paid a month for a monthly pass for their customer that worked well and uh, staff have brought forward a ongoing policy that they can refer to should such a request again come forward. So with that, I would ask for acceptance and approval of those minutes. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, call the question. All in favor? That is carried. Uh, th thank you. Next, we're down to operations, which is Deputy Mayor Wright. Thank you very much. And uh, this is a joint effort between uh, myself and Councillor O'Leary. So I will start off and Councillor O'Leary will take over. Uh, we, we met on November 2nd and our first report was the airport report and the problem that we were having with the water system out there. Uh, the uh, staff met with Tillys and they were able to uh, de get a new um, lease agreement and so we're asking council tonight to uh, uh, approve the lease agreement with Tillys Cafe and the immediate installation of a chlorination, of a chlorination system at the Owen Sound Billy Bishop, <coughs> excuse me, regional airport. Uh, sir, uh, under engineering, we have uh, uh, talked about the 10th Street corridor and what we were going to do to uh, get a, a bit of an ease in traffic on the 10th Street corridor. Now, we have met with uh, the DIA, we've had public meetings, and we've had this under uh, discussion at a number of meetings, and we have come up with a recommendation. And the recommendation is that in consideration of staff report, uh, respecting the 10th Street corridor improvements, the operation committee received the report and we recommend that the split phase of the intersection of 10th Street East and 2nd Avenue East be eliminated for a one year trial period and that the westbound turn lane movements be prohibited during morning and evening peak hours and that a destination signage program be developed to focus attention on the downtown and direct traffic to the most appropriate parking locations. 
this is what uh, we are recommending as from the committee and this was also uh, accepted by the DIA uh, that we're in attendance in the public so that is what we're recommending and I now turn it over to Councillor O'Leary. Thank you Deputy Mayor Wright. Uh, we had a discussion on sewer and water warranty program. Uh, there's a company called Line Warrant, uh, Service Line Warranty of Canada and they provide a warranty to residents uh, to replace their service connection in the event of failure. Uh, war warranties include water service line repairs and or replacements for up to 5000 for a monthly fee of $5 a month and sanitary sewer repairs or replacements for up to $8,000 for a monthly fee of approximately $5.75. Uh, monthly costs would be directly paid by the homeowner. So the committee recommended that the city uh, participate in that program. Uh, recycling film plastics. Uh, we had a discussion, discussion on that. By 2023, producers will be 100% responsible for disposal. Staff recommend that recycling of film plastics is best left until the amended blue box program has been implemented. At that point, the city will then know how much funding is available and for what materials, including film plastic. So the committee moved to receive and uh, take no further action at this time. Uh, there's been ongoing concerns with overflowing curbside waste receptacles in the downtown core. Under Own Sound Waste Management uh, bylaw, there is now a set fine of $105. Uh, the city is considering setting a fine similar to what Kincardine has for their downtown area, set at a maximum fine of $1,000. Increasing the fine requires the city to amend the bylaw to reflect the increase in fines. The increase would include both residential and garbage in the downtown. So the recommendation was uh, staff bring back, uh, bring forward a bylaw to amend the city's waste management bylaw to prohibit household waste being deposited into public waste receptacles as set out in the report and also submit an application to adopt a set fine of $1,000 for the offense of depositing or permitting to be deposited household waste into receptacles located in the downtown. And if it's okay with the Deputy Mayor Wright, I would move approval of those. Thank you. Questions, discussions? Councillor McManaman first. Uh, thank you, Worship. To the uh, Director, on the uh, 10th, uh, 10th Street, 2nd uh, Avenue question, um, it says that we prohibit westbound turn lane movements during peak hours. Do we, do we have a, an indication of what peak hours are? Morning and evening peak hours? Peak hours are typically uh, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Monday to Friday, and uh, in the afternoon it would be 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. And just so we're clear, it's only the westbound one we're talking about having that prohibited. So eastbound, they'd still be allowed to turn left? That is correct, Your Worship. Okay. Councillor Lemon. Yes, Your Worship. Can I ask that that part of the minutes be removed, or that part of the action plan be removed from the minutes on the westbound turn lanes, please, of the uh, restriction? Since item number two. Item number two. And uh, a further question uh, pertaining to Councillor O'Leary's presentation. Um, when you were talking about the garbage containers, and I agree with that, there's also a problem with people just leaving garbage curbside not on the collection bay and without a tag. How is that going to be dealt with more heavily than it has in the past? Mr. Per perhaps for clarification, does the councillor mean in the downtown core or yeah. generally throughout the city? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, there will be a comprehensive rewrite of that section of the bylaw to address exactly the kinds of issues that you're referring to. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go back. Uh, Councillor O'Leary, you're okay with that amendment? Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to mention that I, I probably should have mentioned that too because that was discussed with the with the garbage because most most times the garbage receptacles are full and overflowing and people put them beside the the receptacles anyway. So that all has to be covered in the bylaw. Go ahead. 
and, and this includes this also includes all city garbage retainers, even at Harrison, at the down at the park, and at Kelso Beach, or wherever we have a city garbage. There will be a sticker on it to alert the public that this is what's happening. <coughs> okay, so we are moving. Six. We're re removing the report, save and accept for 6B2. All in favor? That is carried. Okay, now back to you, Councillor Lemon, on 6B2. The actual proposal for the left hand, uh, no left during peak hours, has not been before the board of the DIA yet. We weren't aware that that was a recommendation, so I would ask that, that be tabled it can go to the DIA because I'd like to get input on that from them. Okay. Not voting against it, just asking for a table. So, so the, your motion is to uh, table this until it's been reviewed with DIA. That's yes. your motion. Okay, so the motion's on the table. Going to go to Councillor um, O'Leary first. Councillor Lemon, uh, just so you know, the DIA was at the operations meeting. They were, and they were represented in part of the conversation and uh, the, the motion I put the motion on the floor and uh, the uh, busy hours from four to six and, and uh, seven to nine was a compromise on my part. Okay, in that case, so, I withdraw my motion. So they were there. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor, Deputy Mayor Wright. No, I was just going to say the same thing. Okay, um, Councillor Kepke. Just an explanation on what the motion actually says so the public know what we're voting on just explaining what split phase means and uh, the, the times that about westbound traffic. So if somebody could do that for me, please. Okay, Mr. Backing, I think is preparing or prepared. I, I can speak to the uh, councillor's question if you wish, Your Worship. Um, the split phase, as it stands right, in a typical situation, you have one one phase for for two opposing pieces of or lines of traffic, then an all stop, and then the crossing two directions. Where we have a split phase is right now on 10th Street, there is a westbound movement all by itself, a stop, an eastbound movement all by itself, and a stop. What is being proposed is that the westbound movement phase will occur concurrent to the eastbound phase, and that will be a per possible because we will eliminate the westbound left-hand turn from 10th Street onto southbound 2nd Avenue during the peak hours, which is the highest uh, the, the time during which the highest volumes of through traffic are occurring. So we will not be uh, allowing those left turn movements to interfere with the advancing through movements. During the off peak periods, the left turn movement will be permitted. So in that way, uh, traffic will be allowed to make the left hand turn into onto southbound 2nd Avenue and access the downtown core. I think that essentially covers it, Your Worship. So is that covered? Yeah. Now, Councillor Gregg. Thanks, Mayor. My, my, uh, just one question. What's the approximate cost of this recommended move um, for the one-year trial? Um, and if the trial was not successful in reverting back to the three-phase, what would be the approximate? dollar cost here your worship um, if I restrict my comments strictly to the implementation or lack thereof of the left hand turn movement it would consist of the erection of the prohibiting signage and the programming of the controllers um, we will be programming reprogramming the controllers anyway so this is a, actually a fairly minuscule part. I'm not saying it's insignificant, but it's a small part of a broader implementation. 
Um, the signage that we're referring to would be very similar to the no left turn signage that was put up at um, Fifth Avenue East. So at the bottom of the 10th Street Hill on the east side. Uh, if memory serves, I believe that was done for something in the order of eight or nine thousand dollars. The programming cost, um, it's, it's like an hour's worth of time to, to change the programming of the controller. So it's a, it's a relatively modest expense. I couldn't give you an exact amount, but it, we're probably talking to implement and then unimplement would be something in the order of, I don't know, a couple of thousand dollars at the, at the worst case. Okay, thank you for that. Um, second question, in the committee there had been um, a subsequent part to the motion. I just wanted for clarity purposes that there would be uh, an ongoing study of uh, enhancing the size of the street at 10th Street and 3rd Avenue East. That's no, I just want to be clear, this is, that's not part of this motion because the, from the way the minutes read at committee, it was an and at the very end of it. So I just wanted to be clear that that's, our staff are not pursuing that. No, Your Worship, at this point, there's no, uh, there's no need to, to advance that. Um, we may have to look at other measures l at a later date as it relates to the 10th Street Bridge. But right now, what is being proposed is strictly the prohibition of the left-hand turn uh, during the peak hours, so again, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning and 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, in addition to that, there is a recommendation for a destination signage program, and it's the staff recommendation that that should go ahead regardless. I'm sorry. And there will be some signals changing as well on 3rd Avenue to... to Right. That, that is all part and parcel of the programming that I was referring to earlier, Your Worship. Okay, Councilor Gregg, done for now. Uh, Councilor McManaman. Thank you, Your Worship. But uh, as long as we're on the topic, we are prohibiting westbound uh, left turns during peak hours. Uh, I'm sure the question's out there, why aren't we prohibiting eastbound tur left turns during peak hours? The answer to that, Your Worship, is we're talking about several orders of magnitude of difference between the advancing volumes in those two, two situations, where uh, the traffic volumes um, for the westbound left typically runs uh, from something less than 1% of the total advancing volume to about 2% of the total advancing volumes over the course of the day. The uh, eastbound left turn represents uh, something almost uh, like 20 or 25 percent of the total volumes. So they are, they are totally um, different volumes and, and could not be prohibited. And so will that eastbound turn still be an advanced green? Yes, Your Worship, it would. Thank you. Councilor Larry, did you have hand up and down? I, I just I just want to mention to Councillor Lemon, full disclosure, um, the DIA was there, but it, you know things weren't all ro right. Things weren't all rosy because you know the chairman is Dave Parsons. He was asking for the status quo, but some of them were satisfied with what we ended up with. Okay, so you've withdrawn your motion. Good. Thank you. We still have to approve. Oh, okay. Um, go ahead, <coughs> Deputy Mayor Wright, if you well, want to. I will uh, uh, move the motion that we accept uh, 6B2. Okay, so all in favor? That's it for approval. That's carried. Thank you. Uh, so, do we down to 11D? Minutes of closed meeting from October 30th. Go ahead. I will move uh, acceptance of the closed meeting minutes. From October 30th, 2017. October 30th, whatever. All in favor? That's carried. Thanks. Other business. Councillor Lemon, you're up first. 
Well, over 20 years ago, the city of Owen Sound had a plebiscite on whether to allow a casino or slot machine uh, operation within the city. And by less than 1%, it was rejected at that time. We're having an election next year. Uh, we may well have one plebiscite already on the ballot. And uh, I am su suggesting that should someone come up with, uh, uh, because things have changed and are changing with the Ontario Lottery Commission, uh, if they wanted to locate no one sound right now, uh, the only thing we've got on the books is a rejection by, as I said, less than 1%, which is uh, not a huge amount, but it might dissuade uh, a resort casino operation or something like that from even looking at Owen Sound. So I would make a motion that the clerk's department be requested to add to the plebiscite, or add to the election, a plebiscite on whether or not city residents would accept a uh, casino slots operation within the meets and bounds of the city of Owen Sound. The cost uh, from my discussion with the clerk briefly it would be minimal because there's already an election on and uh, they're uh, and the pleb uh, plebiscite so uh, this could be added on and the time to do it is during an election not between elections where the cost would be I don't know $100,000 probably to hold a plebiscite election. Okay, uh, thank you Councillor Lemon. So you're not asking for a report at this time? I'm just, well, I think maybe a, a, a report from the clerk's office of what's involved would be appropriate uh, to having a plebiscite on uh, casinos, slot machines, whatever. Okay, so the motion is to ask for a report to come back from the clerk's office on. Because I, I feel that something is timely. Um, they're changing the rules. Uh, we don't want to be caught in a position where if somebody was going to build a hotel and casino that we're saying no because of the previous vote. Uh, but I would like to hear what the people have to say and I think this is something that lends itself to a plebiscite uh, because it's a very clear question. Ms. Bloomfield, if we're going to put a question to the electorate, we have to make that decision before? I believe it's March. Okay, it's been extended. And but so that I would be the same that. for, uh, I know there's a petition out there, people that want to do fluoride, so they'd yes. have till March to get the petition. Um, they're slightly different because they're under the Fluoride Act. Ah. So What's the deadline for it? I do you know? I believe they're May. Okay, I'm putting you on the spot, I know. May so. 1st, I believe. Okay, so Councillor Lemon has moved asking for a report, discussion of that. Councillor McManaman. Uh, thank you, Worship. We, um, received a report, uh, I, I can't recall when, I think it's in this term of council, that the Ontario, this isn't, this discussion, this decision is in council's hands, it's in the Ontario government's hands, and I believe they announced several zones that were going to allow, they were, they were going to allow this type of activity and Own Sound was not in that zone. I, just off the top of my head, it seems to me the Wasega Beach area was, or something like that, but, uh, um, yeah. I mean, uh, I guess we can get a report back, but the decision is not our decision to make whether we have a casino, slot machines, or anything else. At least that's my understanding, but anyway, that's all. Okay, but this is just to ask for a report. I'm going to, before I go back to Councillor Lemming, because I know what his answer is going to be. This is to ask for a report. Councillor Kepke? I just wanted to mention that had this not been switched to ask for a report, I would have asked that it just be a notice of motion that so that's, people yep. could think about it. Yep, yep. Okay, so this is to ask for a report. You don't need to explain, Councillor Lemon. No, I, I'm just going to answer uh, Councillor McMahon as I can. Currently, Owen Sound is not in any zone, and uh, but that may change. Uh, who knows with the province and uh, I want to be in a position where if the people want it, that we can go ahead with it. I know it's Queen's Park's decision where it's going to go, but we have the right to say no. 
or yes. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to call the question on that motion. Uh, all in favor? One, two, three, four, five. Opposed? Two, so that carries. Um, other business? That was your only matter. Um, Councillor Thomas, you had two items. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, first item, I'd like to. Uh, offer my congratulations to all of the volunteers involved in the Festival of Northern Lights. Uh, they had a wonderful uh, kickoff to the 30th anniversary of the festival. Uh, really uh, blew the roof off Owen Sound. If you were down there by the uh, river when the fireworks went off, I think it was pretty spectacular. And uh, again, uh, a really wonderful uh, way to kick off the festive season. Uh, and so uh, I just want to offer my congratulations uh, to that uh, group of volunteers because, because without them, this would not go forward. So that was one item. The other item, I just wanted to, once again, uh, for people who haven't seen it, I want to draw the public's attention to the fact that uh, there are a number of uh, committee vacancies in the city of Owen Sound right now, and the notice has gone out uh, to invite people to apply for... Uh, for the committees, uh, the deadline for application is December 1st, and uh, some of the committees looking for members are community services, corporate services, operations, economic development and tourism, and uh, the Accessibility Advisory Committee. And so I just wanted to put the word out there for members of the public, uh, especially those who might be considering uh, uh, throwing their hat in the ring next year for the election, that uh, joining a city committee is a great way to get involved and get some municipal experience in advance of uh, any kind of activity. And it is a great way to give back to your community as well. Uh, Councillor Thomas, do you have the website there that you can give um, hand it out so anyone that is interested can knows where to go and look? I might even possibly have it. I think if you just go to uh, owensound.ca, well, it just popped up. It didn't get, oh, hang on. Uh, yes, owensound.ca slash en slash city dash hall slash committee. Anyway, I think if you go to our webpage, the committees uh, are there and available for you to look at. So snoop around onsound.ca. Absolutely. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Kepke. Thank you, Your Worship. A uh, few things tonight. First of all, uh, to announce that the 66th year of the Kiwanis tree sales is starting to happen um, this Friday, I believe it is. And the hours of operation are Monday to Friday, 4 to 7, Saturday, 10 to 5, Sunday, 12 to 4. They have Fraser Furs for $60, Balsam Fur for 45 and Scotch Pine for 35 And it's always uh, a sellout early, so if you need your Christmas tree, you better get up there. Uh, next on my list is um, the Active Lifestyle Senior Center Open House that was held um, on the 16th of November, I believe it was, Mayor Body and myself attended and looked at all the programs that were taking place. I've left some information for councillors. Just wanted to mention that they're, um, it's a very active place. They have some 250 plus members and um, have a membership fee that helps them be a little bit sustainable. And uh, it's a city building, so um, they've made some renovations to the building, and it's, it's more uh, user-friendly now for the activities that take place there, and a great group of people working there. Uh, next, I have um, a listing. So now that the lights have come on, it's time to hear some music. And lots of great cr Christmas concerts are taking place in Owen Sound, and here's a listing of a few. Great Lake Winds on uh, December 2nd, starting at 11 a.m. at Central Westside Church. Rock the Sound Choir, December 7 and 8 at the Harmony Center at 7 p.m. Georgian Bay Children's Choir, Sounds of the Season, Saturday, December 2nd at 2.30 at St. Andrews. Georgian Bay Concert Choir, A Canadian Christmas on December 2nd at 7.30 at the Harmony Center. Georgian Bay Symphony Christmas Cheer, Saturday, December 9th at 7.30 at East Ridge Community School. And Owen Sound City Band Christmas Time Family Concert, Sunday, December 10th at the Bayshore Community Center. 
And while it doesn't make sound, Tom Thompson's West Wind is on display at the Art Gallery over the holiday season, and it's one of uh, Canada's most famous paintings. So all of the information is available on, on their websites for that. And if I may indulge, uh, one more important item, Your Worship, that hadn't been mentioned tonight is the cultural awards which are taking place in uh, Owen Sound and Owen Sound likes to celebrate its excellence in arts, cultural and heritage. Nominations are now open so we encourage you to get a form on the website owensound.ca. Nominations are open until December the 8th and the awards will be taking place on February, February the 11th here at the Bayshore. So we'd like to see lots of people attending that as well. Good, thank you. My list, a um, huge thanks to Kwanas. It's, I believe, the 72nd annual Santa Claus Parade. It's, uh, it, it's fun to see little kids on the side of the street, and then it's fun a couple of years later to see little kids, uh, those little kids, a little bit older on floats, and then they grow up and they're on the high school float. In a lot of ways, it's sort of the first chance to do community uh, involvement for kids and to be able to perform in, in public in a sense and of course Kwana's uh, music festival in the spring is the other uh, big event that gives kids uh, an opportunity to perform in, uh, in front of adults so it's uh, I don't know how many volunteers would be involved uh, Kwanians and non Kwanians that are uh, helping with security and everything along the way and all the people that put floats together it was a uh, uh, we went through early. I went with Richard to the uh, to the uh, craft show at Harmony Center. Came out and the parade was still going, and walked down and watched the other half of it. It just kept going, and probably one of the biggest crowds. I thought we got around the corner onto Eighth Street. There's still a lot of people that uh, haven't been there before. And again, uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, congratulations to the Walpole family for the 30th. Festival of Northern Lights. They've got some nice new displays uh, that are pretty amazing and worth seeing. Uh, we as a council met for a day already for budget deliberations for 2018 looking at the capital budget. Um, Jervis Bay Park was rededicated and that is the park uh, by the Cenotaph uh, on the south side of 8th Street at the end of 1st Avenue West. It is named after the Jervis Bay, which was a ship. It was a merchant ship that um, um, was torpedoed, I believe, was, was uh, damaged and sunk in the Second World War. Um, we had a, a citizen from Owen Sound would have been the first combat citizen uh, to, to uh, die in the Second World War. So that park was, um, was honored, uh, named after the ship to, to honor uh, Mr. Johnson. Um, when I was growing up, it was a lost park. It was, uh, we called it Hippie Park, so that's where all the tie-dyes hung out in 1967 <coughs> or 60, 68. I was very, very young. Um, but it, it th thanks to uh, people that I think brought it to Councillor McManaman's uh, attention first and uh, got him thinking about the fact that it's like a, a memorial or a burial ground and it's pretty important. At one point we were putting our Festival of Northern Lights in there uh, before Remembrance Day was uh, over. So it's it's really nice to uh, for everyone that was involved that has brought that to our attention. To staff, uh, Pam and everyone involved that moved the post and had it rebuilt and um, bringing that park back to what it's, it's supposed to represent. Also, uh, thanks to our Legion for the Remembrance Day uh, parade and, uh, and ceremonies and uh, lunch after. Uh, very well attended. It's pretty amazing to have uh, still a couple of Second World War veterans there. Uh, Charlie Fisher at 103, that's still pretty spry. Uh, um, um, I'm sticking for other names. Um, Percy Warlow, there we go, and, and others, uh, Mr. Jackson, et cetera, that were involved in um, in Korea right through to Afghanistan and uh, all the peacekeeping that we've done. So it's it's nice to be able to have that uh, remembrance and, um, and, and presentation uh, for people in our community. Active lifestyles, you've already covered that. Um, Giant Tiger has moved into on sound. That's a 
pretty amazing store when we were up there where Zellers used to be at the uh, Heritage Place Mall. There's three businesses along there now. It's a big store. It's nice to see the Canadian uh, maple leaf on it. Um, of course, we know now that Georgian College uh, students are uh, back, I believe, starting tomorrow. Uh, and I know our MPP, Bill Walker, uh, worked pretty hard trying to make sure that that uh, kept coming forward. So those are the things that I covered. Go ahead, Mary. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Well, there's one more thing I forgot. Um, a great weekend coming up for the holiday tour of homes with the proceeds going to the hospice. Um, the tours will be from 12 till 5. Tickets are $25, and they can be purchased at various decorators, one being Awesome Blossom and Decor Design being another. So just encourage people to go to that. It's, it's always a great weekend. Great. Thank you. So I, think okay. that, I think that covers other business. We can go to uh, motion number 13. Move the committee rise and report. Okay, to hit your button so people know what's going on. Move the committee rise. All in favor? That's carried. So we're back in formal session. Number 14, resolution. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor O'Leary, that the action taken in Committee of the Whole in considering public meetings, deputations, public question period, matters arising from correspondence, reports, matters tabled, motions for which notice was previously given, and other business be confirmed by this Council. All in favor? And that is carried. Notices of motion. Seeing none, new business by resolution, expecting none. Bylaws. To you, Your Worship, the bylaws listed for approval on tonight's agenda include the confirmatory bylaw, a bylaw to adopt the bylaw enforcement policy, a bylaw to execute a facility use and building lease agreement with Active Lifestyle Centre Gray Bruce, a bylaw to execute a facade and structural improvements agreement with Women's House Serving Bruce and Gray at <coughs> 229 10th Street East. A bylaw to execute an agreement with Harold Sutherland Construction respecting a portable generator and services at the Bayshore. A bylaw to execute a lease agreement with 884152 Ontario Limited for hangar B5 at the Billy Bishop Airport. A bylaw to dedicate and establish lands known as Part 1 Plan 16R10884 as a public highway for road widening purposes at the corner of 20th Street East and 9th Avenue East. A bylaw to execute an amending agreement with 2159417 Ontario Limited respecting an extension to the lease at the Professional Centre and a bylaw to ratify a memorandum of understanding with QP443. Thank you, Brianna. Moved by myself, seconded by Council O'Leary, that bylaws numbers 2017, 163, 164, 165, 166, 167, 168, 169, 170, and 171 be passed and enacted. And all in favor? And that is carried. Thanks, Arlene. That uh, completes our business for the night. I think I've got 825, so we're adjourned. Thanks, everybody.